Hello, this is Fernando Gomez Sancha, and this is going to be the third video of our series of Sulium enucleation of the prostate performed with the hybrid uh, pulsed Tulium laser produced by Lisa Laser, and uh, the name of the machine is the Revolix HTL. As I said before, I was quite impressed by this uh, laser hemostatic properties and I managed uh, Lisa to lend me a laser to learn and to perform some videos with my uh, impressions of, of this uh, laser, which is diff different from what I had been using the normally the the holmium laser and uh, well this is one of the procedures we have performed as you can see the urine was a little bit dirty probably the result of uh, chronic retention you can see a very inflamed uh, bladder mucosa in this patient his uh, urine culture was uh, sterile uh, but probably that urine never emptied properly for a long time, so that's why there is some um, stuff in the bladder. I like to empty the bladder, and of course, if the urine smells bad, I would stop the procedure immediately, because that might signal you know, an infection and risk of sepsis. But in this case, there was no bad uh, odor, so I uh, started localizing the sphincter edge and marking the white line uh, at, at the apex. One of the things that is you know, striking is that uh, this and block technique can be used with any laser really. And uh, of course, the way we use uh, the laser will be slightly different depending on the properties of the laser when you are uh, using it. And also here, for example, I did a little bit of mechanical dissection with the tip of the scope to enter the, the proper plane. As you know, with the pulsed uh, thulium, we get uh, a pulsed laser, but the peak power of, of each pulse is going to be lower than holmium, and that will produce an effect that is a little bit different. Probably the size of the bubbles that uh, this laser forms when they hit, it does the, the pulses is not as big and it doesn't carry this uh, mechanical effect that tends to dissect the plane uh, following the, the path of least resistance that uh, we use with, with homium, but it does have some, eff some effect and you see, once you localize the proper plane and the proper uh, depth of dissection, it is uh, reasonable, reasonably easy to, to follow this plane. Of course, the advantage here is an amazingly good hemostasis. So yeah, I got the question the other day, which laser do you think it's better to learn? Because Holmium would probably open the plane a little bit easier but uh, in this case following the plane is a little bit more difficult but on the other hand in general I think the hemostasis is is really excellent maybe maybe even better than than, than Moses or uh, virtual basket although it's difficult to say we need to do many many more cases too to say these things with confidence, no, because uh, you can have a clinical impression based on a number of cases, but this is the this is the the, the subjective impression, or not the statistic uh, impression. Of course, uh, we tend to trust what we see, and we tend to trust what we, you know, experience. But uh, it's difficult to, 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 say, to say categorically, and, and as you know, the expert's opinion is, is the lowest form of clinical evidence. So, uh, yeah, but 
these are clinical impressions and here what I did was to enter in both planes then developed a little bit the posterior plane and now I'm coming with the fiber at 12 o'clock to uh, start the early apical liberation although you may think or you may say that we start with this intention from the very beginning so here what I'm doing is cutting on the white line trying to deepen the white line so when when you do this uh, initial cut you get better access to the proper plane and here what I'm doing is just uh, entering the lateral aspect of the prostate this is what I call the, the phase of mobilize mobilizing and connect and connecting uh, you mobilize and connect the apex by entering on the lateral aspect and making sure that the line of the lateral uh, dissection that you are starting there connects with the previous line. Again, here I will probably make a cut initially to get better access and then I'll try to go to the proper plane. You see that my cut is remaining on the adenoma, which means that once you do this cut you have better access and then you can follow the, the anatomical plane. There are some things that compensate the lower dissection effect that you have with this laser as compared to uh, holmium. One is the experience of the surgeon. I think when you are experienced, you can orient yourself very well. And the other one is the technique. As you can see, I follow these continuous lines. I try to generate these lines that go around the, the, the adenoma that connect. I connect the lines, you know, when they are, um, when they are, when I, when I do the posterior line, then I try to connect it to the lateral line and then when I go to the anterior line, I, I, I try to connect the anterior line with the lateral line. So here again, I was doing a, an incision to gain access, but look how I go and look for the proper plane. On the other side, we are performing an ascending, an ascending dissection towards the 12 o'clock region to be able to liberate, mobilize mobilize the apex so you have to go a little bit inside towards the bladder neck because this liberation gives the apex mobility and it will help you uh, reach towards the anterior part without forcing too much of course i try to cut the distal attachment first first sorry and um, what i was saying is once you have this line that is showing you the correct depth of dissection we have to move this line towards the bladder neck circumferentially we have to dissect around the adenoma and then the stress is going to be put on trying to recognize if if the plane continues to be good and you can recognize the plane because you see a beautiful plane with uh, brilliant uh, surface and vessels that run parallel to this surface. So this would be the interface between anoma and prostate. But you can also have another other factors that tell you that you are in the right plane. So, for example, the fibrosity of it. If, if you see that there are fibers in the surface, you know that this is probably a good plane. The color, you know, the the capsule is normally white, the, the adenoma is normally more yellow, so... And also, you know, the fact that you are in the line, that you are progressing from already the, the right plane, is, is a good idea, and, uh, and it keeps you in the plane. I don't know if I can explain myself. So... I am convinced that, of course, this uh, holmium laser ability to take you to the right plane is a welcome, welcome 
property of the laser that uh, I really, really like. But it is feasible to operate with uh, a different wavelength and a different effect if you know the anatomy, if you have some experience, if you can follow this line trying to stay uh, trying to stay in the plane so in the right plane so here you see when I develop this circumferential line I focus on on three things I focus on the distance of the fiber and the tissue to see what kind of effect I have if you get closer the effect is more aggressive if you get further away the effect is less cutting more hemostatic but uh, sometimes you can capitalize this dissection effect. It's, it's mild, it's not as patent as with homium, but sometimes you can capitalize this, this effect. The second uh, thing I focus is on is how fast I move. So you see I do movements from side to side, from up to down, depending on where I am in the, in the circumference of the prostate. And the speed of movement is, is another factor. You have to judge, can I go fast? Should I go slower? Is my movement giving me uh, enough hemostasis? Um, can I move at this speed and have a controlled movement so I fire where I want? So the second aspect that you have to focus on is how fast you move around this uh, line. And then the third aspect, and I think the most important for enucleation of the prostate, and this is something you have to understand, is that uh, where do you aim with the laser? So you see, if you aim against the line, typically there's going to be some dissection of the plane, but of course the angles of the fiber with respect to the capsule are changing constantly so initially you know the lateral uh, angle is going to uh, point outwards uh, when you are dissecting for example the lateral wall uh, or the lateral aspect of, of the prostate at the beginning but then of course as you get closer and closer to the bladder neck the direction is going to change towards uh, the inside so you see, at the beginning, you have to fire against the line of dissection. But if you continue the dissection, there's going to be a moment where your fiber is going to be nearly perpendicular to the to the capsule. So, of course, when that happens, you have to change your aim. You have to fire much closer to the adenoma than to, or, or let's say, medial to the to the line of dissection. You know, I always say the prostate is a formidable enemy, and uh, you know sometimes you find bleeders that are a little bit difficult to to control. So here I am, you see, trying to follow the line of dissection, but controlling very, very carefully these three factors that I um, I was discussing. One is distance. The second one is speed of movement. Speed of uh, displacement, you know, how far, how fast you move around the, the line. I always try to look at the tissue characteristics to try to identify if I am in the interface between adenoma, if I'm getting to, you know, inside the adenoma, or if I'm getting inside the capsule. And I like to move the fiber and I like to keep the effect of the cutting a little bit soft, you see. So I don't want to deepen too much with my cuts because I prefer to pass two, three, four times, you see, following the line and having a smooth uh, cutting effect. Because this way, and if you think about it, because I'm moving, the energy is not going to be working on the same spot for a long time. So it is more difficult to penetrate in the capsule very deep. So I'm keeping uh limits to my cutting and to the speed of my movement so that I cannot inadvertently you know cut deep into the capsule and produce a perforation so when you when you have a laser and and you 
start operating with it, you have to first fire away from the tissue and then gradually get the fiber closer to the tissue to, to, to understand what kind of effects can you have with the laser. And, and then, of course, you have to try to have a very, very good control of, of the working distance. But then, of course, you have to decide as well about how fast to move around the adenoma. And because in different uh, parts of the same prostate operation, you're going to find different qualities of the plane. Sometimes the plane detaches beautifully. Sometimes uh, it's more stuck, maybe by inflammation, or maybe you lost a little bit the proper plane, the best plane, and you are you know, just one millimeter outside or inside this uh, theoretically better plane. And that will give you uh, different uh, feedback, different feeling of how the tissues are, you know, dissecting. So you can see it's quite striking how good the hemostasis is when, when we use this laser. Of course, there seems to be some more cooking of, of the tissue. And... Uh, I would say everything is a little bit more yellow and more uh, affected, at least uh, superficially, in the tissue. So sometimes I have felt that it is somewhat more difficult to stay in the in the right plane than when when I use a homium. But well, I I really think the surgeon can compensate for this small differences in uh, in quality of of the laser so at the end of course we have been very um it's interesting no when you look back at the history of bph and having been to many congresses and discussions in congresses with different colleagues you know i i remember when i used the green light i defended the green light very much against other lasers and we were enemies in some, you know, academic enemies in some respect. And, uh, but of course, then I think Thomas Herman did a very nice paper saying that enucleation is enucleation. And it probably the choice of energy doesn't really change too much the outcome. And despite not having, you know, perfect evidence of that, he had a point. We know that when you remove the adenoma completely, uh, the, the clinical results are going to be excellent and the recovery of the patient is going to be excellent. We saw that with open prostatectomy. We saw that, uh, you know, with laparoscopic, robotic, whenever you remove the adenoma completely, patients really, really improve their avoiding symptoms and their bladders tend to recover better and so on and so forth. So the... We stopped being enemies, you know, although there are some uh, very, very strong proponents, for example, of a tulium fiber laser or tulium over uh, holmium, you know, sometimes there are still some uh, arguments to, to defend one over the other. Uh, but I think we are now seeing two different generations of lasers. Of course, holmium before pulse modulation was very good for dissection, maybe not so good for hemostasis. So some people struggled with hemostasis with holmium. Uh, of course, we could still get excellent results and excellent coagulation and catheter out next day and things like that. But we would struggle more than with pulse modulated lasers. Now with virtual basket and MOSES, the hemostasis, the first pass hemostasis is much better. and. So there has been a generational shift. We have better holmiums than we had before, but now we have better thuliums than we had before. You know, thuliums at the beginning were mostly continuous wave, and with the continuous wave laser, you get much more charring of the tissue and a little bit more obliteration of the planes. You don't see so well, you don't distinguish. I feel that this pulsed laser is more 
more respectful with the tissues than the continuous wave and you know it happened many dulium laser surgeons would not do an anatomical case because they would do three lobes but they would decide where the limit between capsule and adenoma was without much uh, ability to see where was the real interface and then again Thomas Herman described the 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 Thulep technique where he would use the laser to dissect cut and coagulate but he would uh, he would use some mechanical dissection to ascertain that he was in the good uh, plane you know I I didn't believe you could do a good job with a with a tulium continuous wave tulium laser until I saw, I think it was, uh, well, one German surgeon uh, perform a case. And I was really impressed because he did a very beautiful anatomical job with a continuous wave tulium following this uh, Thomas Hermann's uh, uh, indications. I think it was uh, Thorsten Bach uh, who did the case and I was very, very impressed. So that changed me a little bit and I thought, you know, we have to be more open and uh, not uh, stick to what we know, but try other things because uh, often we are going to find uh, advantages. And you see, with this laser, I can feel that the cutting properties are better than with Holmium. The hemostasis is equal or better, or some some a little bit better. Of course, I'm quite happy with the hemostasis I get with with virtual basket and, and Moses. The cutting here is better, as I said, or more clean. One of the examples is when you cut the mucosa in the bladder neck, um, you don't get so much bleeding. There's more hemostasis with this uh, laser, less disruptive effect on the mucosa of the bladder that can bring uh, you know this this uh, this uh, bleeding of the mucosa that might complicate uh, morselation at the end. So here we are learning. Uh, what I think it's very nice is to check or to 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 ascertain that the unblock technique can be used with any laser. And the same principles I'm telling you here. For example, I'm moving relatively slowly. I'm keeping my energy to deliver a soft dissection effect, although. Sometimes, you see, when, when the fiber contacts the tissue, there is some more aggressive cutting like that. Usually, I try to minimize that, but, uh, well, sometimes you, you, if you have an irregular line, it's difficult to, to, to keep, you know, moving around and keeping a perfect effect by, uh, you see, that's a little hole in the capsule, but thankfully not so uh, deep that uh, it will cause a problem. But what is very, very, very important is to keep the fiber closer to the side of the adenoma. You see, I'm firing almost against the adenoma because the energy will cut the attachments between adenoma and capsule, but not deepen too much. That was a little push to see where's the, the, the better plane. And look at how I try to use the energy very softly and keep the fiber closer to the side of the adenoma to try to minimize the chances of perforating in the capsule. So the capsule is getting some coagulation energy, but uh, but not enough to deepen too much in the in the capsule. Mm -hmm. So. There I am. Sometimes uh, the the angle of 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 the plane changes abruptly. You know, so you go from a more likely more horizontal plane to a vertical plane very fast. Sometimes it's not only vertical, but uh, uh, it can go below the bladder neck and return. But incredibly, we can 
dissect these planes with minimal access, with minimal disruption of of the into the retrotrigonal space, because you keep the fiber close to the upper part. You see, that's the way to navigate this. Occasionally, we can see that we have thinned the this uh, this part. Here, I realized that uh, I still had to do a lot of anterior dissection on the right side of, of the patient. Open the bladder neck and like that. But so it's very, very interesting to me to use a different kind of laser and to see how good it is at some tasks. I remember when I did green light enucleation, I would miss the homium often. And when I did holmium with the classic holmium, I would miss the, the quality of hemostasis of the green light. And uh, I had already used uh, thulium uh, continuous wave, and I thought, I wish these two lasers could cut like the thulium. So, but now, as I said, we are in a second generation of uh, lasers represented, I think, by the, this laser, the hybrid thulium with uh, pulsed mode the thulium fiber laser with uh, also this pulsed uh, uh, ability and the new uh, pulse modulated holmium lasers. I have to produce a video of this laser breaking stones. It's uh, very good at breaking stones and that's another feature that has evolved um, from the old uh, thulium continuous wave that they couldn't break stones very nicely but this laser can so if you face a case with uh, multiple stones in the bladder uh, you can tackle the case without having to change uh, to another instrument you can break the stones take the fragments out and then start the enucleation so here i'm trying to navigate the posterior plane again you see also, mobilization is very important, so all the anterior parts is mobilized. Now the, the adenoma is hanging from pedicle at 6 o'clock. So I'm trying to access and trying to liberate, trying to gain a little mobility. You know, sometimes accessing here is a little bit difficult. But if you gain a little bit of exposure and mobilization by you know, cutting around minimally, you get much better access and then you can move forward. So you have to be patient. Try to approach this area from all the sides, gaining millimeters in each side. And then uh, you can you can perfectly reach uh, there. And then the case will be yours. You can see how all along these uh, videos that I put on YouTube, you can see how enucleation has become a much faster technique. In this case, the video has run for 28 minutes, so it's half an hour for, for a relatively bulky case. And here, what I'm trying to check is if, if I can uh, start rotating the adenoma. So initially I lift the lobe, I lift the lobe, uh, you see, and then I push a little bit on the that's the prostatic urethra and there has been a rotation of 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 the adenoma and that will give me access to areas where i cannot reach if you push too hard you see and there are still attachments you could break the capsule there so you have to be very gentle and careful when you do this maneuver but this is the way i try to uh, throw the adenoma into the bladder uh, by rotating it so the adenoma is going to go into the bladder easier if you push it sideways, you know, if it's already rotated. And you will see how when things get looser and the connections are less and the hinge, you know, the, the pedicle, really the hinge where, or, or the, the pedicle that is going to act as a hinge gets a smaller and smaller. And now I'm putting the fiber at six o'clock to cut the last attachments. Uh, then you can push the adenoma, but I, I would push the adenoma following this rotational movement. So I would put my scope 
on the left side of the screen and push the adenoma towards the right, you know, to make, to finalize the rotation. What happens also is that when we are working at this level, often uh, the adenoma will flip completely uh, without having to push it because, you know, only in the very large or very wide adenomas we see that uh, the uh, the, the, the passage of the adenoma into the bladder is, is difficult. In the majority of cases, it's not. So this is one of the things that people ask about in block. With in block, it's difficult to push the adenoma into the bladder, they say, but I, I say it's, it's not so much, not so much. But here we are, huh? and you can see there is some bleeding from the mucosa, but we will be able to tackle that very, very uh, nicely. Also, uh, now I'm changing the emission mode to have a more a continuous wave laser. You see, this is like the old tulium. You can see the bubbles generating at the tip of the, of the catheter to try to get a softer effect, but a very, very, very efficient hemostasis. Sometimes it's nice that we can change. Also, here I think I came back to the normal effect. And you have to check that there are some bleeders maybe at the end. Here you can see how there was a retrotrigonal area, but we managed to dissect, we managed to take out the anoma from that uh, retrotrigonal area just by keeping the aiming of, of the laser against the anoma and not uh, firing at the capsule. So by firing close to the anoma, you limit the amount of energy that the capsule receives minimizing the chances of perforation. There we are. That is the trimming phase where you see if there's some residual tissue. You check the capsule, you see if there's some bleeding before moving on to the morselation. Yeah, so you, you spend uh, three, four, five minutes checking hemostasis. You can also close the, the outflow, sorry, the inflow to reduce the pressure and see if there's something bleeding. You know, there's a number of things you can do, but as you can see, it's very reliable hemostasis. The first hemostasis we did holds. And uh, I'm always very careful with this mucosal bleeding at the edge because sometimes especially in a patient who had these inflammatory changes in the bladder. Sometimes this mucosa is very inflammatory and vascularized and it tends to, to bleed. But you see it's been 30 minutes for the enucleation of a relatively bulky prostate. And now we will move on to morselation. This is the instrument change. You see, it goes very fast. When I get visitors to my operating room, I always insist on how important it is to have a very well-trained team that can help you. Because if you need to do changes of instruments, and especially if you need to clean the morsel later because it was obstructed by tissue or a little stone or something. You are sitting by the patient and you cannot do it yourself. You have to ask your nurses to assist you. You need people who keep the water running during the whole operation without interruption. And it's so important that they do it, you know, and uh, you basically, if everyone performs his role in the operating theater, you can focus on your role. You can be relaxed. You can rely on the confidence you have on your team to do their jobs while you do yours, you know, and uh, 
This brings down the anxiety. You have support in the operating room. You're not alone. I tell my colleagues that they should be present in the operation. They shouldn't be thinking about something else. They should be present. Is is all the team operating, not just the surgeon? So they have to know what's happening. So, for example, if there is a lot of bleeding, and my nurse would start preparing the resectoscope to go back, extract the clots, you know, do additional hemostasis. Or if I see beach balls at the end of the procedure, they know that we're going to have to do something with these beach balls. If the morselation cannot, uh, you know, chew these beach balls, we will have to probably again enter with our resectoscope to cut them into smaller pieces and, and extract them. So if you have this uh, teamwork around you, then you can successfully do HOLEP in a relaxed way. It's a fast operation, so you can do several cases of HOLEP in the, or THULEP in the same uh, uh, operation. And to me, it's clear that we have a new generation of lasers that are better at breaking stones with uh, less retropulsion, with you know better uh, possibilities like uh, dusting of stones and things like this. Their dusting is very useful for for bladder stones as well. You don't have to extract so many fragments if you can dust the majority of the of the of the stone. And uh, I'm so happy that we also have a new generation of morselators that are faster. These uh, rotational morselators uh, can remove a lot of tissue in a short time. And uh, that makes morselation safer because you see that this hemostasis holds for a while, but the morselator is not washing out. There's some inflow and there's some outflow, but it's not an efficient washout of, of the bladder as when you use a... Uh, continuous flow instrument so the visibility will degrade over time you will get worse and worse visibility and if you have a fast morselator you will be able to to complete the, the morselation in a in a shorter time while you can still see properly so good news for enucleation and i think that's why i get the feeling that more and more people want to learn more and more people watched uh, these videos. This is what keeps me, you know, motivated to spend my Saturdays and Sundays editing video when my wife is not here or <laughs> I can get some some time to sit in my office and, and edit these videos. I get a lot of feedback from, from the guys who learn from these and they tell me how happy they are and how their incontinence rates got better when they started doing a block with early apical liberation. And, and I'm so happy to hear uh, all of that. So we are near, nearly finishing the case. Now morselation, as you can see, is very efficient, very good. And we're benefiting from the great hemostasis uh, that we achieved with this laser. And I think the procedure was quite anatomic and nice. So just another uh, video showing how we are enjoying a wonderful time to do endoscopic enucleation of the prostate. And, th and this is why you should start if you haven't. I think nowadays is one of the most important things to do for a young urologist or an older urologist, you know, you can also learn. Uh, uh, but this is one of the most significant things you can learn, because except in specialized uh, centers, I think BPH is one of the most prevalent conditions in urology, and we, we have to deal with BPH. And I think most of the minimally invasive uh, treatments probably compete with uh, medical treatment, but uh, if, if you want to cure your patients, if you want to give them a long-lasting result, a total recovery of their urinary function and excellent quality of life and a lot of happiness, you, you have to 
you have to do whole hip. Uh, most of the patients we treat are 60, 65 years old. And uh, if you have an honest discussion with them about their real, you know, sexual life and how often they, they, they enjoy sex and how how is the trade-off between, you know, losing ejaculation and forgetting about the prostate forever, you know, uh, then, you know, you, you will get a lot of patients who decide to have HOLEP and who are very happy with the, the results and TULEP. Uh, I'm, I'm saying HOLEP because I'm used to, but uh, as you can see and as this video proves, uh, you know, the thulium hybrid laser is, is uh, really, really good. I, I use the the quasi holep uh, setting, so the pulsed uh, setting, and I think I was looking in the fossa to see if there was some residual fragment, and there was some little fragment in the fossa. You see the, more, the hemostasis is fading now, we don't see so well inside the fossa because there is some oozing uh, of uh, inside the fossa. But, uh, well, we can see well enough to see that there are no... Oh, yeah, there is one. Residual pieces, let's see. That was the anterior part of the fossa. So here, just uh, just finishing the case we go before we put on a catheter. I hope you enjoyed this video. Send me your questions and comments. And um, if you don't do anatomic enucleation of the prostate, please start learning as soon as possible. Thank you for your attention.